a question that we get often. Mr. Smith, how many credit cards should I have? Well, that's a great question and it all depends. But hopefully by the end of this video, you have a little bit of insight. Let's go. What up? You got Mr. Smith, 0.5 of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And in this brief video, I want to answer the question that many people ask. How many credit cards should I have? You see a lot of people shy away from credit cards. And now credit cards are really starting to gain more traction. And people are starting to understand the, the power in having one in order to use it to leverage and better their credit. But credit cards are definitely to be used responsibly because it's easy to get off track. In other words, it's easy to not use the credit card in the way that it should be used and find yourself in a worse situation financially or in more debt than you thought you were getting into due to the way the credit cards work. So be mindful if you do desire to get any amount of credit cards, whether that's one or a ton. I know people who have over 12 credit cards. I know people who only do one. I know people who do none. So just understand, you got to understand yourself and know how credit cards work and how they're meant to be used. But how many credit cards should you have? It's really not a limit to how many credit cards you can have or should have because they do help as it relates to your credit due to the fact that credit cards are one of the only vehicles that cover and help all five factors of credit. They help you when it comes to your payment history. They help you definitely when it comes to your credit utilization, which is the ability to keep your credit utilization below 9% and still be using the card. But over the monthly carryover balance, you're maintaining 9% or less. So they help with credit utilization. They help with your credit history. They help with your new credit and they help with your credit mixture. So let's speak on credit mixture for a second because as it relates to credit and having credit cards, Credit mixture is one of the things that helps give you some of the quality pieces that you need that come along with having a solid credit score. Now, the ideal balance in terms of amount of money that you have borrowed, partially from credit cards, partially from other loans, is about three revolving to one installment debt. So what does that mean? So basically, a person who may have a car note or a personal loan or a mortgage Sometimes the balance or the best balance could be with them having three credit cards because it helps offset or show that they're able to properly use both types of credit. They can use installment debt, which is known as car notes, student loans, mortgages, personal loans. But they're also great at using revolving debt, which is what those credit cards are, as well as lines of credit, but specifically credit cards since that's what we're talking about in this video so in that scenario three credit cards will be a great amount in comparison to them having one installment loan and it gives them that balance now that's not to say that that's the must like in order for you to have a 800 credit score you have to have three credit cards that may not be the case because i know i have one credit card and an 800 credit score as well so it can be done with that balance as well the key is proving your credibility and showing that you're able to handle multiple types of debt. So if you're able to handle multiple types of debt, then your credit will be solid as well. But three is a good basic generic answer that I can put across the board that you may want to strive to have. And it's better to have unsecured credit cards versus secured. Secured helps get you on track towards striving towards better credit, but unsecured positions you to show proof that you're able to handle it on the regular terms that are being given out outside of the building phase that comes from you putting money down in order to get a secured credit card. So unsecured holds a little more weight than secured credit cards and about three if I just had to throw a number out there, but it all varies based on your scenario, based on what you're capable of committing to from a discipline standpoint, but just understand how credit cards work. You want to use them, but you want to get in the habit of paying them off in full or keeping that utilization 9% or less. I know many people say 30%. Divide by three. 9% or less is ideal in terms of you strengthening and having the best score because it gives you more buying power. Think about this real quick in this example. If you had a $1,000 credit card and you had 30% of it used, that's 300. Now that's better than having it maxed out. That's better than having 50% utilization. But in the eyes of the creditors and the bureaus, 9% or less would be you having $90 or $99 or less spent on that card, which gives you over $900 in buying power. 
that buying power that you have is factored into your credit score if that makes it simple for you to understand so the more buying power that you have meaning that you're not over utilizing a credit card the better it is for you so hopefully that makes sense in terms of how credit cards work so you can use it in a way that's disciplined but at the same time how many credit cards is a great number based on your scenario so that's all i got hopefully that answers the question that many people often ask mr smith signing out salute